What is up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. This is the first episode of Project J Swap. Wow. We're going to take you guys through the ins and the outs of how to swap a J series into a Civic. Yeah, we're kind of going to be on this journey together. I don't really know what I'm doing. We're learning as we're going here. Not a whole lot of information out there, and that's probably why you're watching this video. So, uh, We'll learn and grow together, and you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for this one. Woohoo! this first episode here um, what we're doing basically is sourcing parts that we need for this build our car is a 1998 Honda Civic Coupe otherwise known as an EK Coupe but we were gonna be swapping a B series into it I was like you know what I really want to take this channel to the next level I mean everybody puts B series in Hondas it's not something new everybody does K series too there's just not a lot of stuff on J-Series. If you're not familiar with what a J-Series is, the J-Series is the V6 engine that Honda produced uh, probably in the late 90s up until currently. Still comes in uh, the new stuff now. So it came in everything from Honda Odyssey, the Pilot, uh, I think it came in the CL, the TL, uh, the Ridgeline, yeah. A lot of the, the bigger vehicles, uh, oh, and even the Accords, um, basically you could get it with, with a J-Series engine. The one we're probably gonna be shooting for is the J35. That is the 3.5 liter, that is the big block Honda motor. So you could get it in a 3.0, 3.2, I think, a th I don't know if there's anything in between the 3.2 and the 3.5, I'm not really sure. Uh, but yeah, the 3.5 and then they also had a 3.7. We're, uh, we're sourcing a 3.5, more than likely from a Honda Odyssey, because that is the most plentiful. There's more Honda Odysseys out there than, than anything with the J-Series. So we're going to be sourcing an engine at some point, but right now we're driving an hour and a half to go meet up with a guy from uh, Marketplace to find a EG subframe. So if you have an EK and you want to put a J-Series in it, even a K-Series, whatever, you have to have the EG subframe. So that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, hopefully this week we'll be able to uh, pick up an engine. My local junkyard has two of them. They have one for $179, I think it was when I called. It just doesn't have a harmonic balancer. That one's not in a car. And also they have one that's still in a vehicle. I'm assuming this one must be more complete. Um, because they want 400 for that one. So I don't know from 179 to 400 what the big differences are between them there. So when I stop in this week there, I'll give them a chat and see what, what the difference is. Maybe we'll just take both of them. That's where we're gonna start, is picking up the subframe. Uh, we are supposed to be work racing this weekend, but there was a rain scare and uh, yeah. Nice sunny weather. I canceled my, my uh, race entry earlier in the week because it was an 85% chance of thunderstorms and well, you guess what? It's freaking sunny out. So, kind of screwed the pooch there, but it is what it is. So, we'll, uh, we'll head on over to uh, the Fox Valley area is where we're heading from Wisconsin Dells and pick this uh, subframe up and see what it's all about. Alrighty guys, so we made it. We are just walking up. How's it going? Hey, how's it going, man? Good. Nice to meet you. I'm Clayton. Nice. Clayton Taylor. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. So this is the unit, huh? Yep. So what? Subframe. So this came out of uh, EG Coupe. Yep, '94 Civic Coupe. Cool, cool. Yeah. So it's one of the things I wanted to mention here, guys, when you're doing this, and I, I did a little bit of research. If you're putting the EG subframe in the EK, make sure you get 
this, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it. What's this bushing? Compliance bushing? Is I that what it's called? It's, they call it compliance bushing, yeah. So make sure you get the compliance bushing bracket because the EK one won't work, as well as the hardware. Um, he said this hardware is from uh, DC2 Integra. Should hopefully be the same as the EG. If not, not a huge deal. We'll figure something out there. But yeah, so we're going to use try and use the power steering rack off of the EG as well. And then but make sure you get this because this will be different, um, the coupler for the uh, rack. All right, so this is uh, Taylor's car. What, uh, what do you got here, Taylor? So this is a 94 Civic Coupe. And if you look underneath it, you could tell it's not from Wisconsin because it's, it's not rusty. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the goal is all wheel drive K series. So um, I'm already committed with the Hasport mounts and everything. I just don't have my powertrain and stuff yet. But um, repainted the engine bay, so I'm pretty proud of that. That took some time, but looking forward to this thing ripping in the future. Hell yeah, we'll have to come back when it's done and, and check it out and shoot, uh, shoot some footage of it. Yeah, I'd love that. Very cool. So that was Taylor, super nice guy. Um, yeah, can't uh, wait to see what his build looks like too. I'll have to keep in touch with him. Meet a lot of cool people in the Honda community. So that was uh, pretty awesome. Um, one thing I was gonna mention too, so for your uh, subframe for what you need, you can either go with the EG or the DC2 Integra uh, subframe. You can use either one. I think the big difference with them is the rack and pinion. So I'm pretty sure you can probably swap the EG and E and DC uh, rack and pinions back and forth, but I did read somewhere that the DC Integra can utilize a bigger rack and pinion. I, I don't know really what you would gain there, or I don't know. I guess I really don't know. We're, like I said, we're still learning. Um, so yeah, we're gonna hopefully hopefully this EG subframe works. I don't have to worry about it, but we'll have to, we'll freshen this one up, probably paint it, and uh, throw some new tie rod ends on the rack. I just hope. Uh, so this EG rack and pinion, Taylor was saying it's a three port setup. And the reason he doesn't have, he, this was what was in his EG, but he switched to the Integra one uh, because the K series that he's put, put putting in requires a two port uh, power steering setup. So I don't know what the J series is. I guess when we get to that point, we'll figure it out then. And I guess if I have to get a different rack or a different subframe and rack, I guess we will. I don't know, this is a learning adventure and we're on it together. <laughs> so there has been a revelation. Obviously yesterday we went and got the subframe and the steering rack from Taylor. This evening we went and drove down to uh, Rockford, Illinois and picked up a uh, transmission from a 2004 Acura TL. This is the one, the ideal one you want if you're gonna be doing this swap. It's not required, but this one is a six speed with LSD. So this is like the cat's pajamas. This is like the best transmission you can buy for a J swap. Mind you, it's by far the most expensive. You're gonna pay anywhere from a thousand to 1300 normally actually I have seen them online for 800 but then you get charged $250 shipping so she's a little dirty but a couple cool things um, about this so we got the clutch and the clutch actually looks like it's in very good shape and these have like a pretty wild clutch setup on them and I believe the flywheels which we're gonna have to get one of them I didn't get that with it and these use I think a uh, uh, what do you call it basically has a spring inside the flywheel so they're kind of spendy so if you can try and get the flywheel um, the other cool thing or the cool thing about this was so we got the clutch also came with the slave cylinder and the line with the hose here as well as the bracket for the cables so that's really good 
Uh, I believe this one supposedly had 180,000 miles on it, which, yeah, it's kind of high, but it is what it is. It's a freaking Honda, so hopefully it's good. You can see in there, there isn't the little bar in there that goes across. When it's wide open like that, that means that it's LSD. So I ended up paying, I think, like, actually, I'll show you here exactly what I paid. So you can see here. That was the VIN and everything, six-speed manual, 3.2 from a 2004. So it was a grand, plus they charge a $50 core, and then tax, so eleven thirty-seven fifty. So like I said, it wasn't the cheapest thing, but it is what it is. Uh, Engine-wise, we did have one located. I called up this other salvage yard, and I'm not going to lie, they were... Not the nicest, didn't really seem like they wanted my business. Uh, the one that they had for 400 bucks didn't have any of the accessories on it. It was just a bare engine, like bare long block. Everything had been robbed off of it. So kind of was upset about that. Found another salvage yard a little bit further away. Um, that one had one for $200, kind of high miles, over 200,000. Um, but they only wanted 200 bucks, and he said that if I wanted like the engine harness and all the accessories and everything left on it, um, as long as they were still there, which he was pretty sure they were because it was still in the car or in the Odyssey, um, he'd do everything for like another 100 bucks. So we might have 300 bucks in an engine um, with everything. So when he gets it in the shop this week to pull it, he's going to give me a call, let me know what's all there, figure out a price to be exact or whatever. But yeah. Kind of cool so hopefully in the next few days here i'll have an update as far as the engine goes and we'll go pick that up 100 years later we are heading to go get a honda odyssey engine got that big block 3.5 liter we just picked up the engine and she's right there and uh we got a wiring harness with it we got uh the power steering pump i think the ac compressor might be on there Alternator unfortunately isn't there, um, but hey, we got most of the stuff we need now. Once we get it back to the house, I'll uh, give you guys some close-ups. So I'm on my way home still. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys a little bit here and tell you uh, that I, I'd like to go over, you know, as we go along, kind of tell you like roughly what it costs to do the J-swap, just so you have an idea. You saw what the transmission cost me. Um, and as far as the engine goes, I was gonna show you that. Uh, I think our next big purchase is probably gonna be the engine mounts. Uh, I also need to get a flywheel yet too. So um, yeah, mounts will probably be our next big purchase. And then probably CV axles after that. So um, yeah, I'll show you the invoice I got here so you can kind of see what I got charged. You can compare it to your local salvage yard um, and hopefully get something close in price or whatnot. So here it is, 2003 Odyssey, 3.5 liter, says that they did test the engine. Uh, had they had this power steering pump on there, so the engine was 200, the power steering pump attached was 25, and then they just kind of bundled it all together with a throttle body and the whole engine harness for another 25 bucks. So put me the total with tax for 263.76, so pretty damn good price for a you know complete long block with wiring and everything so it's definitely doable to do this pretty budget you could have saved quite a bit of money doing the accord transmission so if you do do that and you don't want to spend as much as i did you can get away uh with doing that so yeah i just kind of wanted to show you guys that here she is rolling into her new home hell yeah i'm like pretty stoked on this so just kind of going through it's late at night now just kind of looking over the engine. Um, so the alternator isn't there, which I knew. Um, just gonna kind of show you guys some stuff here. So we got the power steering pump here. Hopefully uh, we can find a setup that hopefully our rack will work with this. It's a single port here and a single line. So 
It's the only thing I noticed on that. Um, surprisingly, it does not look like there's any leaks. For how many miles are on this thing, it's pretty surprising. Definitely have to figure out an exhaust issue or exhaust situation because they just cut that right off. So we're gonna have to probably get some headers or something or order a, another stock complete setup. Um, I'm glad they left all the stock brackets and mounts on here um, from what I can tell. But yeah, we got the whole harness here, so that's good. So we got this back bracket that came with. Um, luckily the coil packs and everything are on here also, so that's really good. I was looking at some of the connectors here, they all look good too. They disconnected everything really nicely. So we got this mount on here. Um, I don't see the one on the other side though. Um, oh yeah, it's be attached to the transmission, that's why. We got this one. So, um, I think pretty much everything is mostly here that we need. Got our intake manifold, throttle body. Looks pretty good shape, honestly. I'm, I'm very impressed that salvage yard, we got this from, uh, is great. So pretty cool. So I think... We just need to start saving up a little bit. We do have to get mounts and axles and figure out exactly what we're gonna do uh, ECU wise, that sort of thing. And we can send the harness out and have it paired with an OEM ECU, but then we can't tune. Or you can have them set it up so your, your wearing harness will work with an AEM ECU also. Or we just buy a complete harness and ECU set up specifically for an AEM uh, setup. That seems to be what a lot of guys do. So, but on the cheap, we might just send the harness out and have it set up just for a stock ECU. Cause I think I looked on eBay and I can get a stock ECU for like 25 bucks or something. So it's like nothing. The only thing I know they have to do, I believe in the harness too, is delete the immobilizer. Um, and when you send out your wiring harness to have it set up, you have to send your factory harness in also. So if you, like I have a stock single cam D series in there, Civic currently. Um, so I'd send in that plus the Odyssey harness and then they mold them together and make it work, I guess. I don't totally know until it, <laughs> we get to that point. So yeah, it's uh, it just sucks because there's just really not a lot of videos out there explaining this stuff. So I'm gonna try and document every step along the way and show you guys everything that I get as well. Um, I did order a set of flywheel and clutch bolts because I noticed we don't have those. Uh, I'll have to save up for a dual mass flywheel also. Those aren't very cheap. They're I think on Rock Auto for a Luck branded one, L-U-K. They're like 256. Otherwise, everywhere else they're pretty much between three and 350. So um, that's something. If you get a junkyard engine or trans, try and get the dual mass flywheel with it, or at least the whatever flywheel came on the transmission. Try and get uh, get that. We got lucky on the clutch. I haven't had a chance to inspect it yet. Yeah, just uh, like to give a special shout out to Full Bore Enterprises. JM Pressure Washing, um, American Auto Body, GMJ Automotive, Wanderlust, Black Hills Tours, the Sturgis Rally is going on this week. So if you're out there and if you see this video, definitely hit up Wanderlust, Black Hills Tours. Um, if you could guys, please like and subscribe. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you on the next one here soon with some more updates on the build. We got about a month, I think, till the next race too. So. Being that we didn't show up to the last one, we got a little bit of a gap here, so summer's uh, ending quick here, so try and get out there and have some fun, and we'll uh, see you soon, so thanks guys.